Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at government policies and their impacts on the foreign exchange markets. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your AP microeconomics and macroeconomics exams. Let's get into the content. Before we get started, I have to point out that some of the government policies that we will talk about will have conflicting outcomes on the foreign exchange markets. So what do you do when that occurs? Well, my suggestion is you focus on what the question asks you. Read it carefully. There will usually be keys that help guide you in answering the question. So if it tells you to focus on the price level impact, focus on the price level impact. If it's the interest rate impact, focus on the interest rate impact. And then you will get the right answer. The first thing we're going to do is look at trade restrictions and their impact on the foreign exchange markets. As you may have learned back in micro, tariffs are one of those trade restrictions. They reduce imports. And as you may have learned with this tariff graph, with international trade and no tariff, we will have a large quantity of goods imported whenever the world price is lower than the domestic equilibrium price. If we put a tariff on this graph, it shifts the price upward and we get a smaller number of goods imported. Quotas are another one of those trade restrictions and quotas will also reduce imports. Here we have the amount that's imported before an import quota and then after the import quota we have a smaller number of goods and services imported from other countries. So now we're going to take a look at the impact of those trade restrictions on the foreign exchange markets. First let's take a look at the foreign exchange market for the US dollar. We have the x-axis there is marked as the quantity of US dollars. We have the price of US dollars in Chinese yuan. We're looking at the yuan to US dollar exchange rate here. And we have an upward sloping supply curve and a downward sloping demand curve with our equilibrium quantity and equilibrium price. That's the exchange rate marked. If we see an increase in trade restrictions on Chinese made goods in the United States, that will cause a decrease in the amount of imports from China. That decrease in imports is going to decrease the supply of US dollars. Because US consumers are going to be buying fewer Chinese made goods, that means they will be selling fewer of their dollars. And as we know, selling of US dollars is the supply curve here. So that will decrease our supply curve shifting it to the left, and that will give us an increase in the exchange rate, and that means the US dollar has appreciated. On the flip side, we're going to take a look at the impact on the foreign currency here, in this case, the Chinese Yuan. So here we have a foreign exchange market for the Chinese Yuan. We have quantity of Yuan on the x-axis there, and we have the price of Yuan in US dollars over there on the y-axis. Again, we have a downward sloping demand curve, upward sloping supply curve, and the equilibrium exchange rate and quantity marked. Since those trade restrictions are going to reduce the amount of exports from China, that means that the demand for Chinese Yuan is going to decrease, shifting that demand curve to the left, causing that equilibrium exchange rate to decrease. That means the Chinese Yuan has depreciated. Whenever one currency appreciates, the alternative currency appreciates, and vice versa. Next, we're going to take a look at changes in real income and their impacts on the foreign exchange markets. First, we're going to take a look at the changes in real income caused by expansionary fiscal policy or monetary policy. As we should remember from the ASAD graph, expansionary fiscal and monetary policy both shift that aggregate demand curve to the right. And that is going to cause our real income, real GDP is what it's also called, to increase as a result. And when national income increases, citizens within that country are going to buy more of everything, including imports from other countries. And now we're going to take a look at the impact of those policies on the foreign exchange market for the US dollar. Since US citizens are going to be demanding more foreign made goods, including those made from China, that means consumers are going to increase their supply of US dollars and increase their demand of Chinese yuan as they demand more imports. So that means the supply of US dollars is going to increase and the currency is going to depreciate, which means the exchange rate has fallen. On the flip side, we're going to see an increase in the demand for Chinese Yuan, and the Chinese Yuan is going to appreciate. Next, when it comes to contractionary fiscal and monetary policy, as you remember on the ASAD graph, that is going to be a decrease in the aggregate demand curve. And with that leftward shift of the aggregate demand curve, we are going to see a decrease in real income, shifting from YF to Y1. And with that decrease in national income, citizens are going to buy fewer imports. Over on the foreign exchange market for the dollar, that means there will be a decrease in the supply of US dollars as US consumers will buy fewer Chinese made goods. And that's going to cause the US currency to appreciate. 
And over on the foreign exchange market graph for the Chinese Yuan, we are going to see a decrease in the demand. That is going to mean that the Chinese Yuan is going to depreciate. So next we're gonna take a look at changes in the price level and see how those impact the foreign exchange markets. Well, if we have expansionary fiscal or monetary policy, that's going to, as we just saw, increase the aggregate demand curve and that causes the price level to increase as well. That increase in the price level means that domestic goods are going to be more expensive. And as a result, foreign goods are going to be relatively cheaper. Over on the foreign exchange market graph, since we're going to see an increase in imports and a decrease in exports, that means our supply of US dollars is going to increase as we demand more foreign made goods. And at the same time, since foreigners will be buying fewer of our more expensive, thanks to the increase in the price level, domestic goods, we are going to export less. That means the demand for US dollars is also going to decrease. Both of those shifts mean that our exchange rate is going to fall and our currency is going to depreciate. Over on the Chinese Yuan graph, since we are going to see a decrease in imports and an increase in exports, that means we are going to see a decrease in the supply of Chinese Yuan as Chinese consumers buy fewer US made goods. And we will see an increase in the demand for Chinese Yuan as US consumers demand more Chinese made goods. That is going to cause the currency in China to appreciate. If on the other hand, we see contractionary fiscal and monetary policy, that will cause our price level to decrease. That lower price level makes our domestic goods cheaper and foreign goods will be relatively more expensive as a result. Over on that foreign exchange market for the US dollar, US imports are going to decrease as a result of foreign goods being relatively more expensive than domestic made goods thanks to our decrease in the price level. And exports are going to decrease because our goods are relatively cheaper as a result of our price level falling. That means that the supply of US dollars is going to decrease and the demand for US dollars is going to increase. Both of those shifts are going to cause the US dollar to appreciate. Over on the Chinese Yuan graph, since we have a increase in Chinese imports and a decrease in Chinese exports as a result of the change in the price level in the United States. That means we're going to see an increase in the supply of Chinese Yuan as Chinese citizens demand more US made goods. And we are going to see a decrease in the demand for Chinese Yuan as US consumers buy fewer Chinese made goods. Both of those shifts are going to cause the Chinese Yuan to depreciate. So the next thing we're going to look at is changes in interest rates and how those impact the foreign exchange markets. The first thing we're going to look at is contractionary fiscal policy and expansionary monetary policy. Let's remember how contractionary fiscal policy impacts the interest rate in the loanable funds market. We could see an increase in the supply of loanable funds or a decrease in the demand for loanable funds. Remember, either shift you pick is perfectly acceptable on the AP macroeconomics exam, but either shift will drive down the interest rate in the loanable funds market. Now, expansionary monetary policy will also decrease the interest rate, so both policies decrease that interest rate. To see the impact on the foreign exchange market, we have to remember that both policies decrease that real interest rate. We are going to see that foreign investors will seek higher interest rates elsewhere. That means that U.S. will see a net financial capital outflow as foreign investors sell U.S. assets and therefore sell U.S. dollars in order to buy foreign currencies where they can buy foreign assets with higher interest rates. That means China, in this example here, we're looking at China versus the United States, they will see a net financial capital inflow. And that is because foreign investors are going to buy Chinese yuan as they buy Chinese interest bearing assets. Over on the foreign exchange market for the US dollar, we are going to see an increase in the supply of US dollars as foreign investors sell US assets and therefore sell US dollars. And we are going to see a decrease in the demand for US dollars because foreign investors will be less likely to buy US assets as a result of the lower interest rate in the United States. Both of those shifts are going to cause the US currency to depreciate as a result of the decrease in the US interest rate. Over on the foreign exchange market for the Chinese Yuan, we are going to see an increase in the demand for Chinese Yuan and a decrease in the supply of Chinese Yuan. Both of those shifts are going to cause the Chinese Yuan to appreciate as a result. But if instead we seek expansionary fiscal policy or contractionary monetary policy, those will have a different impact on the interest rate. For the expansionary fiscal policy, we must remember that would cause a decrease in the supply of loanable funds or an increase in the demand for loanable funds. Remember, either shift is acceptable on the AP macroeconomics exam, but both of those shifts will cause an increase in the interest rate in the loanable funds market. 
On the monetary policy side, a contractionary monetary policy will increase the equilibrium interest rate there. Since both of those policies caused an increase in the interest rate and foreign investors will seek those higher interest rates, the United States is going to see a net capital inflow. And that means foreign investors are going to buy United States assets and therefore buy United States dollars. On the flip side, China will see a net capital outflow and people will sell Chinese yuan and Chinese interest bearing assets as a result. Now let's see the impact on the foreign exchange market for the US dollar. Since foreign investors are seeking those higher interest rates found in the United States, we are going to see a increase in the demand for US dollars and people who already have US dollars will be less likely to sell them. So we will see a decrease in the supply of US dollars as well. Both of those shifts cause the US dollar to appreciate. And on the foreign exchange market for the Chinese Yuan, we are going to see an increase in the supply of Chinese Yuan as foreign investors sell those assets that are bearing less interest. And we are going to see a decrease in the demand for Chinese Yuan as well. Both of those shifts cause the Chinese Yuan currency to depreciate. Whoa, that was a lot of information. If you already got it all, you are on your way to acing your next AP macroeconomics exam. If you still need a little more help, head over to reviewecon.com and play the foreign exchange market game. It'll help you practice the skills you've learned here. And if you still need a little more help after that, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics AP exams. That's it for now. I'll see you guys next time.